Senate Judiciary Committee, non-committal on Matt Gates as Attorney General. Now, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these talking points are just simply uh, people playing block and push for the time being. Uh, when push comes to shove, they will, you know, they know how their bread is buttered. Okay, they're going, they're going to go along with it. I'm letting you know they're going to go along with it. Jim Squito says, why? Why can't they believe it? Trump has been telegraphing moves such as this for four years. They have no reasonable basis to be surprised. It's disingenuous. Senator Manchin says senators are now talking about Gabbard and Gates picks on the Senate floor right now. No one can believe it. Yeah, I think it's fake. When people say that they can't believe it, they're just, they're, they're stating that because that's the appropriate thing to say. But if you feel comfortable that these guys will do the right thing, uh, you're wrong. You'd be wrong. Just letting you know, okay? I want you to understand you would be very, very wrong, all right? These guys are going to, uh, they're, they're, hope it's wrong, but I'm hearing through the great, uh, the grapevine about this bonkers plan. Trump would adjourn both houses of Congress under article two, section three, and then recess appoint his cabinet as predicate for Trump's exercise of adjournment power. One house of Congress would seek others consent to adjourn and be denied. So speaker of the house would need to be complicit in evisceration of Senate's advice and consent role. House speaker, Mike Johnson needs to say no to this right away. He, if he can't do that, then he has the bully pulpit, right? If he can't do that, then he can utilize the bully pulpit to his advantage. That's the other thing. He'll bully the, the, uh, he'll bully the Republicans into submission. That's what he's going to do. Bully pulpit is, is just a term for the president speaking. That's it. That's what it is. Matt Gates for attorney general is pretty gross. Yeah, but it don't matter. A senator told me rumor on the hills that Elon Musk is threatening to fund a primary challenge to any House Republican who doesn't fall in line with Trump's agenda. There it is. I mean, I don't know if uh, I don't know how valid this is, but it's it's completely, uh, completely in line with his past performance. So it's not even remotely shocking to me that he would do such a thing. And anyone who would be surprised by such a thing is silly. Okay. How do we get Dems to stop licking their wounds and actually stand the fuck up and be the resistance? I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't even know. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it can happen. I think they're just going to show their belly like the cowardly fucking babies that they are, you know? I think the Democratic Party is more predisposed be it with winning uh, on their own terms. And if they lose, it's fine. Now chatters want rad libs, that tracks. That's why I said, I think the primary goal going forward is not to rely on the Democratic Party to actively combat this administration's uh, uh, enormous power grabs, but instead to try and focus on uh, outside of the party organizations like legal organizations, that try to uh, utilize the remaining, uh, uh, the remaining court structure, and, and that's it. I mean, look. And that's a credit uh, to our incredible incumbent frontline House members uh, who connected with the people that they represent, have a vision for the future, focused on the kitchen table pocketbook issues that matter, and have been reelected. I think it's also fair to say that when you look at the battleground situation that occurred at the Senate level, and far be it from me to speak for my colleagues in the United States Senate, but it is clear sure. that you had multiple battleground states where Democratic incumbents, or in the case of Alyssa Slotkin and Ruben Gallego, two House members were very proud of them, were elected to the United States Senate on a very tough night. So I think we have to make sure that we are clear-eyed and authentic uh, and unadulterated in how we uh, assess what happened so that we can engineer a comeback on behalf of the American people and protect the things that matter, our American values, uh, protect our institutions, protect our freedoms, uh, and protect, you know, the way of life in terms of the middle class and all those who aspire to be part of it. Uh, but we also, I think, can't be hysterical in our assessment that this was some anti-incumbent wave that knocked down Democrats all across the country when the facts actually say something very different. What do you think about progressive trying to push Ben Winkler as the new chair of the DNC? Questions right, and if he can, then 
we'll we'll go through the confirmation. Meet Kane's making fun of me. The one friend who's too political. That's funny. Ah, um. So from raw to well done, how cooked are we? We are so cooked. Here, here's what Tulsi had to say, by the way. Or here's what uh, a Jewish insider had to say about Tulsi Gabbard, a Jewish insider correspondent. Tulsi is a few marbles. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, it is. New Jewish insider via Mark Rod. Why conservatives concerned about Tulsi Gabbard as possible director of national intelligence? Uh, the former Hawaii Democratic Congresswoman's record on the House is drawing scrutiny. Uh, this is an official. This is a, uh, this, a Jewish insider, senior congressional correspondent got a um got a quote from an official at a pro-israel group and they said talsi's a few marbles short of a full set but we are hopeful the marbles she has are blue and white in support of israel you know you called it what is this yeah we are we are in staring down the barrel of a gun right here okay um, oh uh, i called the the gimme ceasefire yeah a close aide in Netanyahu told Trump and Jared Kushner this week that Israel is rushing to advance a ceasefire deal in Lebanon with the aim of delivering an early foreign policy gift to Trump, said an Israeli official. Damn, dude. Who could have fucking predicted that? By C.J. Werleman, Trump has nominated Tulsi Gabbard as director of national intelligence. In 2019, I obtained secret tapes of her praising an obscure cult leader who said Muslims are demons and opposed tolerance towards Islam. It's in Lebanon, which they already announced. They're almost done with destroying the towns close to the border. It's an easy gimme. I know. Uh, and I, I'm saying that there's going to be an additional gimme potentially as well with uh, Gaza, only to re-up, rearm, and then uh, go back and, and finish the job in the West Bank. The replies to this are so insane. Uncommitted okay. Michigan delegate on CNN pleads with President Biden to do something about Netanyahu before Trump. In West Bank and Southern Lebanon. And... Mike, Heck, Mike Huckabee was just named as the guy who's going to oversee the final stages of that campaign. And so our message right now is to President Biden, you've got to do something about this. President Biden, stand up for once to Netanyahu before Donald Trump successfully gets away with pinning this legacy of this ethnic cleansing campaign on, your, on you and you alone forevermore. If it looks like ethnic cleansing, it sounds like ethnic cleansing. It's an ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza and West Bank and southern Lebanon. And Mike, Heck, Mike Huckabee was just named as the guy who's going to oversee the final stages of that campaign. And so our message right now is to President Biden, you've got to do something about this. President Biden, stand up for once to Netanyahu before Donald Trump successfully gets away with pinning this legacy of this ethnic cleansing campaign on, your, on you and you alone forevermore. He knows how to talk to Biden by mentioning his legacy. It doesn't matter. Oh, I don't think Biden cares. I think check the replies. They're insane. I don't want to see. I don't want to see liberals being like you call them Joe Harris. So all uncommitted, undecided folks, words and actions contributed to a Harris loss. There will be a lot of woulda, shoulda, coulda. See, maybe they should have committed. I'm very sympathetic to his pain and horror that is transpiring in Gaza. Two, I hope his plea is considered. Three, maybe he should ask Jill Stein to stand up on his behalf. Yeah. Anyway. so. Yeah, things are not looking too great, folks. But hey, guess what? These guys are civil, you know? They're civil. The, the civil transfer of power is happening, okay? According to an oppo report obtained by Eve the Red, Matt Gaze was involved in an autoerotic auto asphyxiation game that led to a man's death with Gates and his dad covered up. Can't corroborate the details of his death, but I did find a man who matches the alleged victim. Oh, I don't know about all this. I mean... I'll look into it before I fucking start covering shit like that. Okay. Why the uh, Japanese goblin emoji? I just like it and it's red. I think it looks cool. That's pretty much the only reason why I use it in my titles. Anyway. Ever admitting or conceding to Joe Biden for the 2020 election. Which also and had never had inviting are. Biden to the White House. And never also had an effect and not going on, to his inauguration. on President Biden's approval rating, and it got his presidency off to an entirely different start. There's no doubt about it. And I want to bring in our Caitlin Collins, yeah, who is there tingle. at the White House. And Caitlin, it is a really a remarkable moment to see them sitting there together at the White House. Um, exchanging pleasantries, very nice, very cordial. Trump himself talking about the smooth transition and the fact that, you know, they're meeting at a place just feet away from where Donald Trump himself watched on that TV. Did he January go over the appointments in Elon yet? Yes, I have been going over the appointments non-fucking-stop, including but not limited to the Matt Gates one that is, like, actually insane. Insurrection take place. This you can confirm. Um, it is just a remarkable moment.
Yeah, and for that, Biden said that Trump was had held a dagger to the throat of democracy. There's no age that you can't be sexy. I say we change Florida's welcome signs to this. Free Nestor? Bitch, Nestor is never getting freed. Okay? Nestor is never getting freed. There's going to be one million Nestors, dude. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Yeah. A sign of how easily some Senate Republicans might cave on uh, Gates. Mullen is previously accused, of, uh, accused Gates of sleeping with an underage girl, showing off videos of girls he slept with on the floor, and bragging about taking ED meds to go all night. <laughs> yeah, Mark Wayne Mullen said, you got to think about this guy. This guy that didn't have, uh, that the media didn't give the time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there was a reason why no one in the conference came and defended him. Because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls he had slept with. He bragged about how he'd crush ED medicine and chase it with energy drinks so he could go all night. This is obviously before he got married. And so when that accusation came out, no one defended him. And then no one in the media would give him the time of day. All of a sudden, he found fame because he opposed the Speaker of the House back in November. And he's always stayed there. And he was never going to leave until he got his last moment of fame by saying, by going after a motion to vacate. That was Mark Wayne Mullen shitting on Matt Gates not that long ago. Here's Mark Wayne Public. Mullen now as we watched in real time. Uh, when asked by Jake Tapper, are you going to vote for Matt Gates?" Mark Wayne Mullen, I completely trust President Trump's decision making on this one. Now, Jake Tapper is a journalist or is supposed to be a journalist. And what's really interesting about this situation is that if I remember Mark Wayne Mullen saying stuff like that, why the fuck does Jake Tapper not remember that? He has a shit ton of producers, does he not? Why can't you hit Mark Wayne Mullen with that quote and be like, hey, remember when you said this about the guy who you're saying you're going to confirm? Like, why? Why can't you do your job? This is like bare minimum shit. This is bare minimum shit. This is not... Like, I'm not asking people to go above and beyond. I'm simply asking these guys that are currently facing down a crisis in journalism to do journalism, to restore some semblance of faith that the American population will place upon you because it is needed, okay? It is needed. That's what's so frustrating about this is that, like, while I am unimaginably critical of uh, mainstream media... I also still recognize the necessity of mainstream media, okay? But it seems like a lot of these people in positions of power do not give a shit. They don't care. They have their heads stuck in the goddamn sand. So they're saying there is a 17-year-old girl, 17-year-old woman who... This interview was really funny because he was like, well, Tucker, I hung out with you and her. And he was like, whoa, 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 don't involve me in this. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Two GOP senators. A House Republican tells me, Farnoosh Amiri, uh, me and Farnoosh Amiri of Associated Press, that two Republican senators have already texted him that they will not vote to confirm Matt Gates for attorney general. Name them. Names are you made it up. Yeah, they're going to fucking come after these people. This could be a false flag. Let Gates fail so you can pick someone else who wouldn't usually get confirmed, but Republicans are less likely to say no twice to Trump. I, I think that is too smart. I think personally, this is my 2021 video on Matt Gates. Matt Gates the creep three years ago from 2021 with almost a million fucking views. Go watch that to understand all of the severity of the allegations, the accusations launched towards this man. Okay. Now, another thing that I need you guys to understand going back to, uh, going back to what I was talking about. Okay. I think that the Matt Gates pick is like being a false flag. Matt Gates pick being a false flag for uh, uh, a, a, you know, still unacceptable pick that Republicans can't say no to twice is too smart for the Trump campaign. I think that they just are not thinking like that. I think they're just trying to boulder their way. I think that Matt Gates, given, given Matt Gates background, Given Matt Gates's, uh, you know, given Matt Matt Gates's background, okay, and given uh, his loyalty to Donald Trump, because he's been in rooms with Donald Trump every single time, I just don't think that uh, I don't think that they're thinking beyond that. They're like, nah, he's loyal and he's also controllable. I think they want him. Certified unk take on the Gates nomination.
Appointing Matt Gaze as attorney general seems to be a message that we're not interested in stopping crimes. We're interested in committing more. I think he's a sacrificial lamb for the Senate to not confirm. But if he's confirmed, that means there are no bounds left at all. Matt Gates at defense would have made more sense because I believe him uh, a little bit that he's anti-war. But there's almost no chance that Gates won't target his political enemies as attorney general. The chance of him honestly and impartially enforcing the laws hovers around uh, hovers around zero percent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> these Republicans, man, these Trump Republicans keep these Trump Republicans have no respect for law and order. I feel like. Rep. Mike Simpson, a senior GOP uh, appropriator, asked if Gates has the experience and character to be attorney general. Are you shitting me? Did you just ask me that question? No, but hell, you'll print that, and now I'm going to be investigated. Matt Gates' wife is a part of the family who made Oculus, which is acquired by Facebook, which Peter Thiel still remains on the board of. Do you think that means anything? The false flag seems to be too big brain. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a false flag. I think this is infinitely more. Uh, that guy also does defense contracts now, right? The Oculus guy. Doesn't he also have defense contracts now? Palmer Lucky. Yeah, these guys are like a part of the, uh, a, a part of the Silicon Valley orbit of... Uh, yeah, these guys are all all the the Silicon Valley libertarians that are totally in uh, in the tank for Donald Trump and have been so. So I think Matt Gates is doubly connected to the administration. If you watch all of those like uh, behind the scenes documentaries about Donald Trump, I mean Matt Gates was in every fucking room all the time. Okay, he was helping with his like debate performance, yada yada yada. Palmer Lucky and other see defense tech leaders. Palmer Lucky and other defense tech leaders see Trump's victory as a win for the industry. This man is Matt Gaetz's brother-in-law now. Okay? To be fair, Chatter is kind of doing some conspiracy shit. Wife is part of Oculus, bought by Facebook, where Peter Thiel is on the board. Has nothing to do with Palmer Lucky. No, Palmer Lucky and all of these, like, Palantir, Peter Thiel, uh, Andes are all defense contractors <clears throat> that have been very excited for a... Trump victory. They've been in the tank for Donald Trump. So Matt Gates is also doubly connected on that regard as well because um, there's a reason why they chose v uh, J.D. Vance, right? There's a, we there's a reason why they chose J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance was like uh, to assure the Peter Thiel and the Silicon Valley VC guys that they will have a say in the upcoming administration. These guys are all some of the biggest fucking libertarian nut jobs, by the way. Palmer Lucky is Matt Gates's brother-in-law. Listen to your interview on CBC. It was really well done. Cool to see you getting on mainstream news uh, sources, even in Canada. Just wish they got your opinion on what's happening in Canada, like you'd vote for and all that. I'm sure Canadian fans are eager to hear stuff like that. These, I remember listening to an interview with not Palmer Lucky, but with a Google guy alongside, I think it was like Mark Milley or something, giving an interview to NPR about what they want to do with the Defense Department. And... Let me tell you, okay, they don't have good ideas. They're talking about reinventing the procurement strategies and, and talking about how America has fallen behind in terms of like in, innovative war tech. <coughs> what the fuck? <coughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm dying a little bit. Innovative war tech and how they have to, uh, how they have to, to get faster at uh, producing new technology in the field of battle and, you know, test it out like they are doing in Ukraine. Yeah, everybody hates this fucking guy, but... When you see the anonymous sources and insiders forecasting my demise, know this, they aren't really coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just in the way. Oh my God, everybody says this. That was Matt this. Gates in 2021, we should note. So he was right that uh, they're... Their reports, the reports of his demise were uh, premature. Uh, to note, uh, the Gates uh, had sought a preemptive presidential pardon from Trump over a Justice Department investigation. Um, that is according to a Trump aide who testified at the January 6th hearing. The Gates. You should not forgive the Democratic Party for losing to this uh, incompetent, sociopathic campaign, okay? Like, the fact that they threw... Uh, as though the fact that they threw as though like this does not uh the, the fact that they threw caution to the wind as though these guys did not represent a dangerous path forward and now they're just glad handling and shaking hands and slapping asses and they're back to business as usual politics like as though this shit is not objectively fucking terrifying and dire for america's prospects like, every time I see these fucking assholes smiling next to one another, I'm like, 
Like, what are you doing? I thought, I thought this shit sucked. I thought he was a fascist. I thought you ran against him in 2020 to restore the soul of the nation. And not because you selfishly wanted to be president after trying and attempting to be president since 1988, you know? But yeah, go ahead, chatters, liberal chatters that come in here to be like, Hassan, I can't believe you keep saying both sides are the same. I'm not saying both sides are the same, but the Democrats keep saying they clearly are not afraid of the other side as much as I am, okay? Do you understand? When you present this narrative that Trump is a dangerous fascist and then turn around and, and you know, kiss his fucking ass like this and don't do anything in the lame duck to, you know, beef up American democracy and the American institutions... Well, I guess you don't believe he's a fascist at all. You were just kind of saying that. Or you do believe he's a fascist and you like it because you're a fucking fascist too. I, th like there's no secret third option here, okay? Like which is it then? Which is it? What is it? What, what's going on here? Yeah, here's Pete Hegseth. Using his platform on Fox News, Hegseth lobbied repeatedly on behalf of the three men, even as platoon members serving under Lawrence and Gallagher Describe the killings as cold blooded and unnecessary. Oh, yeah, this One fucking asshole personally platoon, got these guys pardoned. Quote, straight murder. Trump dropped charges against Goldstein. his own platoon was like, bro, you are a freak. Okay. His own platoon outed this man for being a fucking so rabid this, sociopath. Quote, national security officials and defense And then Pete Hegseth stepped in and personally got Trump to pardon them. And now Trump's like, yeah, we want that guy to be the fucking. A responsible party for the entire defense puts department. Puts the highest value on loyalty. That's Eric Edelman saying that. Like on the funnier side, he also has admitted that uh, he he does not wash his hands at all. He doesn't believe in germs. Being used is how well do people defend Donald Trump on television? One assessment was more blunt: Who the f is this guy? Said a defense industry lobbyist who was granted who, who spoke anonymously to be candid. Should he be confirmed, Hegseth's first order of business will likely be that purge of Pentagon top brass. Here's what he said on a podcast six days ago. This guy's a deus vault tattoo, you gotta man. You got to fire the chairman of Joint Chiefs, and you got to fire this. I mean, obviously, you're going to bring in a new secretary of defense, but any general that was involved, general admiral, whatever, that was involved in any of the DEI woke shit, it's got to go. Got to go. The future of the United States military on the line as Donald Trump nominates a Fox News weekend morning show host to be the Secretary of Defense is where we begin the hour. Retired four-star Army General and MSNBC military analyst Barry McCaffrey's here, plus retired U.S. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel, founder of the Democratic Majority Action Pack, Amy McGrath is here, oh, and look, the president of Media Matters for America. Another fucking brilliant winner right there. The Department of Government Efficiency is officially outside of the government itself, but Elon went ahead and gave it a gray badge to make it look like it was official. I mean, it doesn't matter. Of course, this is fucking play thing. All right. Let me get back to let me get back to Lindsey Graham and other top senators on the Senate Judiciary Committee noncommittal on Matt Gates as Attorney General. Now, a lot of these uh, a lot of these talking points are just simply uh, people playing block and push for the time being. Uh, when push comes to shove, they will. You know, they know how their bread is buttered. Okay. They're going to fucking, they're going to go along with it. I'm letting you know, they're going to go along with it. Do not be surprised by this. Action to Matt Gates as AG. Yeah, I don't know yet. I think about that one. I mean, do you have any concerns about it? We'll see. Yeah. I mean, he's and in I'll the tank. Lindsey Graham has never not kissed the fucking ring. You know what I mean? Oh. Senators spoke a little bit more at length, Jake, including Senator John Cornyn, who's also a senior member acceleration is eating good right now that's the funniest part about this it's the democratic party that are the accelerationists it's not the fucking activist base you know what i mean like the democratic party gave this election to donald trump do not forget okay they gave this election to donald trump and now they are i don't know they're just acting like this is not a thing this is not like devastating i think these are the <laughs> the real accelerationists are at the tippy top of the Democratic Party. They do not care about a, a, a Trump future, okay? If they did, they probably would have run a better fucking campaign. I can totally understand that Democrats underperforming and losing is what they're good at, but considering how bad the Republican campaign was, I cannot grasp how it was so successful. Shouldn't they have also done worse with that bad of a campaign? I'm a Canadian, and I watch your coverage of right-wing media, and I still can't mentally grasp what brings that many people to this conclusion. I mean, 
it's it's pretty simple. People are like, I need more money in my pocket. And Trump says he's going to do it. And the Democrats keep telling me that like things are fine. Things are good. And that's it. That's it. You have no, you have no interest. You have no interest in preserving the, the sanctity of these wonderful institutions. If you don't feel like these institutions are defending you, if you don't feel like these institutions are there to protect you, why the fuck wouldn't you want to blow it up? You don't give a shit. You're like, yeah, dog, fuck it. Who cares? Of the Senate Judiciary Committee, someone who ran for majority leader, fell short in that bit, said we'll have to do our job as a Senate, do our advise and consent function. Very noncommittal when I asked him if he would support him. And I also asked Senator Tom Tills, another senior member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. My libertarian Bernie respecting Trump loving boss just messaged me about him and his wife moving out of the country over Matt Gates for attorney general. Seven days into transition, they'll be fine. If they love Trump, they'll be fine. They'll be like, nah, this is great. And he said, he said, Mr. Gates and I have jousted on certain issues between the House and the Senate. He said, at the end of the day, it only comes down to whether you have the credentials and also the relationships. And of course, what Tillis was referring to was Gates' central role in pushing for the ouster of Kevin McCarthy back last year. That led to a whole back and forth. It made him very unpopular. The Senate will not confirm him, bro. Relax, lol. Let me explain something to you, okay? I'm Turkish. And when I was growing up, there was a man named Recep Tayyip Erdogan, okay? And one of the things that Recep Tayyip Erdogan did was secure uh, his, his immediate periphery with, like, a new rank of wealthy multimillionaires that would then dominate the Turkish economy. But he didn't stop there, Okay. In Turkey, the military is considered much more significant and much more impressive and much more important than the way we here in the United States look at the military. After all, Turkey has had numerous coups, military coup d'etats that have overthrown administrations in the past. So knowing full well, knowing full well what was going on there, okay, Recep Tayyip Erdogan also has undermined the military. He did this after the last attempted coup that took place, not with the military, but by a CIA-backed Fethullah Gulen who died recently, okay, in his Poconos home. Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Donald Trump are very similar to one another, okay? Very, very similar to one another. All of the institutions that you believe will preserve American democracy or American normal American existence will be eroded. Donald Trump, I've heard, has uh, uh, specifically thought about... Uh, putting in charge of the defense department like uh, and the appointments like the general appointment structure a former general uh what is it like the warriors uh committee or something like a different committee so that he can have loyalists that end up making these appointments why didn't this happen in 2016 then is on because donald trump in 2016 was definitely not as firmly within the establishment of the republican party he did not have the same level of control. He was not as prepared. He just kind of lucked into this position. Brother, if you read reporting on this, as I did uh, way back in the day, you will recognize that Donald Trump himself didn't think that he was going to win in 2016. Okay? It came as a shock to him as well. Four years, uh, four years of, of leading the administration, and then another four of, of trying to avoid legal uh, scrutiny and, and wanting to preserve... Uh, his, his, I guess, legacy, but also more importantly, just trying to not go to prison, avoid jail time. Donald Trump now is back with a vengeance. And this time, he's not going to repeat the mistakes he made. He's not going to have cabinet members that are not uh, incredibly loyal to him. Okay? He is going to make sure that he undermines every institution, including but not limited to the American military. This is what strongman leaders do. This is what Recep Tayyip Erdogan did, and this is precisely what Donald Trump is going to do as well. He does not want any threats. He does not want anyone who can maybe stop him. He's going to go in and he's going to put his loyal soldiers in every fucking federal agency this time around. Uh, and he's not, he's not going to, like, first and foremost, the most important thing that is that Donald Trump needs here in, his, uh, in the way that he's making these assessments is, like, people who are committed to him, people who have demonstrated loyalty to him, Okay. Above all else, that's what's the most important thing. He can't have a fucking Mike Pence style situation again. All right? That would be unacceptable. Senator Bernie Sanders is uh, has announced 
a piece of legislation that he is moving forward next week with a resolution to block billions of dollars of aid to Israel. Starting tomorrow, APAC is running ads in 17 states urging senators to oppose the resolution. By the way, do not know how much support it will pick up, but I will, of course, be in support of it unconditionally. This time, Donald Trump is more prepared. Okay? He had four years to fucking imagine what it would look like to have this, uh, this vengeance agenda, to have this vengeance campaign among the House Republican Conference and faced a barrage of criticism from Republicans in the Senate as well who... Or he says, we are flying out to D.C. tomorrow to try and lobby for senators to support this bill, which is luck chat. Hell yeah. Viewed the whole episode as showcasing how the House was dysfunctional and that how they could not govern and the like. And they pointedly blamed Gates for leading the charge against McCarthy. That, along with the questions about this ongoing House ethics investigation into alleged sexual misconduct, Gates has denied any wrongdoing. But I asked Cornyn about that too, Jake. And he said, I'm sure that will come up at the confirmation hearings. So that's one of the things that yeah. members want some answers to on that topic as well, Jay. Interesting decision by the senator to invoke sword fighting as a, as a metaphor there uh, <laughs> regarding Matt Gates. These interviews were made for you? Yeah, the New York Times interviews, how do we get here? The New York Times is uh, interviewing late, decide, uh, late deciders. I voted for Donald Trump, uh, Donald, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. I decided after Kamala went on, call her daddy. This is Pierce 26 from North Carolina, he's white. He's in sales, and he didn't vote in 2020. Lillian, 27, Virginia. White, digital advertising, voted for Trump in 2020. I voted for Trump and made that decision the same day the mainstream media was having a meltdown after the Madison Square Garden rally. I also saw an ad from Democrats about abortion misinformation that really made me upset. I said, you know what? I'm going to vote for Trump. Everybody hates him. They're lying about pregnancies. Let's just do it. Jack, 22, New York. White, underwriter, voted for Biden in 2020. I wrote in for Mike Bloomberg. I don't like either top of the ticket. That's incredible. McLean, 25, D.C., white, legal field, wrote in Romney in 2020. I shocked myself and voted for Trump. Shocking that someone who was still doing a writing candidacy for a fucking dumbass Republican uh, was able to get herself to write, you know, to actually actively vote for Donald Trump. Hmm. No one tell my family. I was so impressed by J.D. Vance, the way he carried himself and how normal he appeared. I think I became radicalized on the men and women's sports issue. The ad that says Kamala represents they, them, Trump represents you. That was so compelling. While Trump is deranged, he represented normalcy somehow to me. I was looking for a candidate that I felt I could trust as Laura, 20, uh, Maryland, white, legal intern, didn't vote in 2020. A key moment that stuck out to me was the SNL skit that Harris did, where she essentially made fun of herself. All her focus was going to entertainment industries and avoiding interviews. That came off to me as very phony. Lillian, 27, VA. Uh, white, digital advertising, voted for Trump in 2020. The thing that was really uh, the nail in the coffin for me was when Biden called half the country garbage and then the White House moved to change the record officially. That really bothered me.